After Queen Daenerys sets up her base at Dragonstone, Elaria Sand attends a meeting with Daenerys, Tyrion Lannister, Princess Yara Greyjoy, and Lady Olena Tyrell in the chamber of the Painted Table. Elaria and Yara advocate attacking King's Landing. However, Danny is unwilling to lay waste to the capital and create a bloodbath. When Tyrion confronts Elaria about her role in the death of his niece Princess Marcella Baratheon, Elaria attempts to justify herself and states that her greatest regret was that Oberyn died fighting for Tyrion. Daenerys ends the argument by warning Elaria to respect her hand. Elaria and Lady Olenna reluctantly acquiesce to Tyrion's plan to use the Martell and Tyrell forces to lay siege to King's Landing. Tyrion's plan involves using Yara's portion of the Iron Fleet to transport the Dornish and Tyrell forces across the Narrow Sea to King's Landing, allowing the xenophobic interpretation of foreign invaders to be depleted. While traveling with Yara's Iron Fleet, Elaria drinks ironborn liquor with Yara and Theon, which she compares unfavorably to Dornish wine. Elaria asks Yara if she had ever been to Dorne, to which Yara responds that she has been there a few times. Elaria responds that there is a boy in every port in Dorne, which Yara responds, a boy, a girl. Depends on the port. Yara and Elaria begin to sexually flirt with each other. Yara tells Elaria that Theon will serve as both her bodyguard and advisor. Yara puts her feet up on the table. Elaria bends over Yara and spreads her legs apart across the table. Elaria moves her hand up Yara's leg towards her crotch. Elaria invites Theon to have a threesome with her and Yara, but Yara tells Elaria to leave him be. While Yara and Elaria began kissing, Yara's ship is struck. On the deck above, they discover that their fleet has been ambushed by Yoron Greyjoy's portion of the Iron Fleet. That night, their fleet is ambushed by Yara and Theon's uncle Yoron Greyjoy, who commands a larger faction of the Iron Fleet. Yoron boards Yara's ship and his men overwhelm Yara's forces. Elaria retreats below the deck with Tyene but Obara and Nymeria are killed by Euron. When Tyene, who was fighting off Euron's men to protect her mother, is overwhelmed, Elaria pleads for a quick death, but Euron's men only smile and shake their heads as they take the women prisoner. They sail away, prisoners of war aboard the Silence, en route to King's Landing, leaving Yara's fleet to burn in the sea. In the aftermath of their capture, Euron takes Elaria, along with Tyene and Yara, to King's Landing to present as his gift to Cersei. He parades them through the streets of the capital, and the crowd take great delight in pelting them with insults and trash. Euron throws Elaria and Tyene in chains at the foot of the Iron Throne as a token of his loyalty. Elaria spits hatefully at Cersei's feet, though she is clearly horrified at the sight of Gregor Clegane looming over them, even more monstrous than when he killed her lover. Later that same day, in the Red Keep's dungeons, Cersei has Elaria and Tyene chained up on opposite sides of their cell, gag. Cersei taunts Elaria by sadistically recalling the Red Viper's savage death to Elaria and how Elaria screamed at the sight of it. She attempts to anger Elaria by recalling how Oberyn looked beautiful that day, and his fearsome skill with a spear though it eventually didn't stop Gregor from killing him, as well as implying that Oberyn brought his death on himself by taunting Gregor at the last instead of finishing him when he had the chance. She then remembers raising Marcella, and the fact that Elaria murdered her. Cersei angrily demands to know why Elaria murdered her only daughter, but the Dornish woman only grins mockingly at her in return. However, Elaria's mocking smile fades when Cersei turns her attention to Tyene, complimenting her daughter's perfect Dornish beauty, and musing that she must be Elaria's favorite child by her late paramour. Realizing that Cersei intends to kill Tyene in retaliation for Marcella's death, Elaria desperately tries to beg for her daughter's life, but with the gag muffling her, her pleas are unintelligible, as Cersei mockingly points out. Cersei notes how Elaria chose to murder Marcella and must have felt powerful after having done so. Cersei then expresses that she thought for a long time about how to destroy Elaria. She thought of having Gregor crush Elaria's skull like Oberyn's, but while poetic, it would be too swift a death. Cersei then continues that she thought about having Gregor crush Tyene's skull but tauntingly remarks it wouldn't be right to have Tyene's lovely face cracking open like a duck egg, as she removes the girl's gag and kisses her full on the lips. Alaria's eyes go wide with horror as she realizes what Cersei is doing. Tyene desperately calls out to her mother before Kyburn re-gags her, and Cersei reveals that Kyburn figured out what poison Alaria used to kill Marcella. 
As a heartbroken Elaria falls to the floor, sobbing, Cersei has Kyburn confirm that the poison means certain death, but how long it takes to kill depends on the strength of the victim's constitution. Cersei then triumphantly tells Elaria that she will watch her daughter die in their cell, and then she will be forced to watch Tyene's beautiful face crumble into bone and dust, and that they will keep Elaria alive to watch that, even if they have to force feed her to do it. Before leaving, Cersei orders the guards to frequently change the torches so Elaria doesn't miss a moment of her daughter's death and decomposition. The moment Cersei is gone, Elaria and Tyene frantically try to reach each other, but with their chains too short, they are unable to embrace or comfort each other before Tyene's inevitable death.